I'm looking for the one who fired the pistol at heaven. You trying to say I gotta aim up to shoot because of my height? Hello everyone and welcome to Deadly Premonition 2. This is Pear. In the last video, I did some skateboarding. And what we need to do next for the story is order red beans and rice at Alexis's diner on a Monday. It's a Thursday right now, so we have three days until Monday. And this is a good opportunity to fool around and probably try out some things we haven't done before. For example, visit this area which looks like a fishing hole and some other side quests. But you won't have to watch all of it. And then I'll go straight to Monday to continue the story. Well, here we go. Shut up in that vast desolate evidence vault along with all the other cases marked by nothing but a first degree murder tag buried in a soggy grave at the bottom of a sea of data. That would have been its fate. I'm close to what I suspect is the fishing area. And I took notice of something. There's a red tree here. And I wonder why. I wonder if it's something important that will happen later on in the game. <gasps> oh, and there are a lot of alligators here. Good to know. Moving on. We're here in the middle of the pond, but all I see is a valve and nothing else. I guess this place isn't important until we progress more in the story. Look at that red tree! It has to mean something, right? Tell folks about how I got to customize a board for an FBI guy? Of course not. You're my mentor, after all. <gasps> really? Thanks. I, I reckon it might help out whenever I decide to open up my own shop, you know? I bet it'll make me famous. Official choice of FBI special agents. <laughs> I'm gonna name it Emma's Skateboard Workshop. When that happens, I hope you'll expand and open up stores all throughout the U.S. Otherwise, I'll have to come down to Louisiana every time I need to fix up my darling. You trying to butter me up with compliments? <laughs> Absolutely not, Emma. I'm serious. Your skills are top class. You figured out how I ride my board merely from the friction marks, then adjusted my trucks based on that. The wheel and bearing selection in your shop makes perfect sense to me. Your finesse with applying the deck tape was also impeccable. It's rare to find an artisan who thinks this deeply about her customers. I now understand why you call this a workshop rather than a garage. Emma, you should be more confident. Zach and I both guarantee that you possess true talent in your craft. Agent York, you really believe I'm that talented? <laughs> wow, um, I'm so moved I don't even know what to say. See you later. Oh, if you ever got any skateboard questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Since we're doing the Lord Hunger's quest, he won't give us a checkup, so I can't finish this quest. How annoying. I keep messing up the 24 hour clock, so in order to enter the owl's nest, I need to wait one hour longer and I'm gonna give a smoke a try. 
it should be somewhere in my inventory. Here we go. Slowly pass time. Pass time normally. Alright, let's try one of these. Yes. Oh. I think I'm having an issue with this game. The problem is when I aim or when I run forward, the controls just force me to wiggle around. My clean suit is finally clean and I can change it. I don't know if this one's even dirty. Let's change it and let's clean this one. Because why not? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, looks alright. I'll get used to it. I just found out I have limited inventory space. Oh my god. And I bought sunscreen. <laughs> and all this useless stuff. What the fuck was that? I just found, um... The story chart, which is weird. Don't know why there's a freaking diagram of it all. Does it have multiple endings? Oh. <laughs> B.O. When you have a body, bo uh, a body odor, the stench will attract flies. The more time you spend in the state, the worse the odor will get. Flies will never leave you, which will gross out the townspeople and will allow some creatures to notice you faster. Take a shower, use items to mask the mask. My god, look at those flies! I'm a stinky fellow. Time to have a shower. Due to the nature of our work, we've had to stay at hotels all over America. But Zach, do you know what I hate most about living out of a hotel? Shower pressure. The shower was invented so that human beings could quickly bathe in large quantities of water, correct? Yet there are far too many hotels in our nation that have showers with embarrassingly weak water pressure. It's an outrage. And I'll keep tooting my horn about this every chance I get, believe you me. Okay, now I'm clean. It's Friday, and I need my drink. Where's the jazz guy? Well, look what the cat dragged in. <laughs> I don't know if I want to talk like him. <laughs> Listening to some kick-ass music while drinking some kick-ass brew. It's heaven, pure heaven. Or it was, at least until some dumbass BFBI with no manners decided to talk to me. Oh! It's a jazz performance! Is that the pastor? Yeah. Who's this girl? I don't think we ever met her. I need a drink for my quest. Drink all seven of Xavier's cocktails across the course of one week to learn more about his true identity. How do I drink here? He's performing. Maybe I should wait till late at night. Here we go. They stop performing at... What? What's the time? Nine o'clock? Ah, oh, let's talk to this girl. Raven. How's the investigation coming? Must be going well if you're on the case. She's the drama! Huh? You think I'm drinking and driving? Well, you're wrong. This is a non-alcoholic beverage. As a pro driver, I would never do a thing like that. Hi, Agent York. 
Hey, Agent York, you actually came out to watch us play. How'd you like the show? Jazz is the mother of all music, like a primal scream from the soul, you know what I mean? No. Have you come seeking salvation? I'll be happy to guide you. Did you come to listen to the music? How's your investigation going? What? It was an amazing performance? Pitiful! I am a servant of the Lord, which means that playing the piano ain't no different from verbal prayer to me. All I need to do is think of my love for the Lord, and my fingers move right on their own. Okay. Well, you Give me a cocktail! Sometimes folks feel like. Yes, they... truth bombs. Let's test something out. Yeah, I'm Wrigley now. I think I know the problem. It's not a glitch. It's because you're drunk. This moving problem is it's because you're drunk. So when I walk straight, I just I just I mean, I just can't walk straight when I'm drunk. Okay. Those felt so glitchy. Okay, now now that I know, um, I don't have to restart my freaking switch again. <laughs> I thought it was I thought it was a problem, but it was an actual mechanic in the game. Okay, good good to know. All right, let's continue on. Thanks, Miss. Next time you get a wait. I got a beard! My beard grew! I just... I just did not even, like... I completely forgot about it. <laughs> Weird. Oh no, I think I did. I made a mistake with this side quest that involves drinking a cocktail every single day. I've been drinking from the shop, but I think I had to talk to him every single day. Oh, what a big mistake. A Zazarak? Yes, that's more like it, Xavier. Now it really feels like we're in Louisiana. Pay towards bitters and Sazerac whiskey. Every part of this recipe just screams Louisiana. Take a sip, Bureau. It's overflowing with all the passionate sweetness, bitterness, and sense of the South. If you can drink this, you'll be able to go shoulder to shoulder with any other Southern drunk. Yeah. Zach, we finally found ourselves a proper Southern drink. This cocktail originated in 1830, right here in New Orleans. It's fantastic. Some say it's one of the oldest modern cocktails. You want to try it too, don't you? Let's slide this traditional Louisiana cocktail right into our stomach. A new item has been added at Owl's Nest. Okay, so that means I got two cocktails. Two or three cocktails in the menu. Well, sometime yeah. Over here. Okay, so a Sazerac. I think we unlocked two other cocktails, so we have three cocktails. This might be Monday, this might be Tuesday, and this is Saturday, so I missed out on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Well, I gotta. Yeah, back. Yeah, be remember. I gotta keep that in mind for next week, so I can finally finish this quest. And it's it's just it's it gives you I the idea that you have to buy a cocktail from his shop, right? But in fact, you're supposed to talk to him, have a conversation, and he gives you a special cocktail each day. It's either one or the other, and it's just... 
the fact that <laughs> it the quest is so vague and non-specific it just I don't know if it's a good thing that when you design a quest that it just it's just not clear I don't know maybe it's just my fault for not figuring it out <laughs> here's the thing about this game when it was um was it Friday or Saturday? I think it was Saturday. I wanted to sleep all the way to Monday. I wanted to skip it because there's nothing much else to do during that time except mediocre side quests. I cannot sleep more than one day because this happens to me. I become stinky and hungry with low stamina and decreasing HP. Well, ah, uh, that's fine. I guess that's logical. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. It's now Monday, and we're at Alexis's diner. Hopefully, we'll get the rice and beans, and continue on with the story. Give me those beans! <laughs> oh, coming right up, huh? Where are those beans? Yes! Alexis, would you mind keeping the red beans in the can? I'll pay the regular price, of course. Oh my lord, why don't you want me to take them out of the can? They're for an offering, you see. Oh, why didn't you say so? The Lord Hunger! My god, everyone knows. Exactly. As you can see, I'm a pitiful lost lamb. Now I get it, Zack. This is nothing but a shameless fetch quest. <laughs> no, duh! Going back to Tyrone. Zack, we finally managed to assemble the Taboo Trinity, and it was certainly no small task. I just hope it rewards us with some data that will help us push this investigation forward. I can't remember why we even need to do this. Oh, he's outside, waiting for us. Have you come seeking some? Oh! What? Are you accusing me of being a smoker? Is he smoking? Yeah, there's a smoke in his head! Pitiful. I was only holding the cigarette, that's all. What? No need to hide it around you? Oh, pitiful. Just pitiful. Oh, Lord. Please grant this overly suspicious lost lamb some salvation. I beg you. But the quest... Maybe I go inside. Okay, Pastor. I've brought you your taboo trinity. I'd like to exchange it for a ticket to the goddess. Oh, how I pity you. You see, my dear lost lamb, our lord still No! Hungers. Not another fetch quest, please. One anaconda skin, one squirrel tail, and one pressed white guara. This is what you must bring next. Are you kidding me? How pitiful. <laughs> Our Lord never speaks in jest. Uh, I told you this was going to be a pain in the butt. Come on, we need to get going. <sighs> it looks like we'll need to work harder to get God's attention, Zack. I already worked harder! Part of me just wants to say to hell with it and go have a smoke. Let's just go have a smoke. Oh, 
I already have squirrel tails. One quest done. Anaconda skins. Where the fuck do I get those? Acquire pressed white Gora for the taboo training. I have no idea where to get those. Can the guy tell me? One Anna and one pre for it is the thing is, I own one and make no boo. <sighs> okay. Okay. You know, Patty, I just remembered something. When we met Philip in the sheriff's office, he mentioned your mother. What sort of history does Melvin have with the Clarksons? That's what I want to know. What do you mean? The Clarksons know everyone in town, and everyone in town knows the Clarksons. This is Lucare. That's all there is to it. Zach, something isn't right here. I just hope the Clarksons don't have anything to do with her mother's illness. That's all I'm concerned about. Either way, the truth will reveal itself to us eventually. Just like it always has. Can the truth of the skins and the Gora thing appear to me, please? I don't know where to get these. They don't tell me. It really seemed like you knew who Galena Clarkson was. Well, I've never actually talked to her, but it's a small town. Pretty much all folks know who the Clarksons are, and Galena's supposed to be extra scary compared to the rest of them. Back when we saw her in town, I felt like she was glaring right at me, so I got real scared. No one will come out and say it, but I'm pretty sure they're all relieved that she was the killer. We're lucky the killer ended up being a member of the Clarkson family. Otherwise, the whole town would have turned into a battlefield. You've got a point, but did everyone really hate her that much? They didn't hate her. She hated them. She had this real peculiar way of treating people. I don't know how to describe it. Contemptful? Yeah, I guess that's it. She never opened up to anyone in town. She was rich, beautiful, and wanted to become an actress. So she went to a metropolitan city to refine herself. There's always a chance that people like her may develop prejudices towards those who stay in the countryside. A big chance, even. But just because a person has prejudices doesn't mean they'll go out and murder people. That's where my doubt lies. Was there any sort of omen which made people happy that she was the killer instead of someone else? I'm just telling you how I feel. How am I supposed to know if everyone else in town felt the same way? I never thought she'd actually go and kill her own daughter, though. There it is, Zach. It appears that her attempt to kill me wasn't simply a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Maybe she was sad. Sad, perhaps. Instead of returning as a star, she was forced to come home after her dreams were crushed. That certainly sounds like a sad story, doesn't it, Zach? No, Agent York. Not that kind of sad. The kind of sadness that keeps folks away, hidden behind her attitude. Is there a word for that? Maybe it ain't in her attitude or her words, but the way she appears. Yeah, it's in her eyes. They remind me of someone. Who? PJ Clarkson? No, someone else. Hmm, I can't remember. That's okay, Patty. Just let me know if you happen to recall it later. Until then, Zack and I will help you think. You didn't even twitch when you saw Galena's body. Why would I? Dead things can't hurt us, right? Girls your age don't usually think that way. Do you have kids, Agent York? No, I don't. I'm not married either. Then you have no idea how girls my age usually think. Besides, I'm used to seeing dead bodies thanks to CSI. Especially dismembered corpses like hers. You know, for a so-called profile and professional, you're pretty clueless. In that case, allow me to apologize. But don't you think it's a bit of a leap to discount my observational abilities simply because corpses don't scare you? I don't know. I mean, you're completely wrong. Do you know what I was thinking back there then? Of course not. I'm not a pro. The same goes for me, Patty. No manner of pro could ever know 100% of what another person is thinking. Unless, of course, that pro has a mental connection with them, like Zach and I have. If I was telepathic, I wouldn't have joined the FBI. 
I would have taken over a small country or become a messiah. Now who's making crazy leaps? I will admit though, Patty, I feel like you and I have something in common. We definitely have similarities, even though they aren't as strong as the ones that Zack and I share. Whatever. Perhaps you and I grew up under similar circumstances. We're both unique cases. Huh? Unique cases? In your case, your beautiful mother's second husband became your daddy. But then your mama got sick, forcing you to take care of things, while you use CSI as your escape. Would you just knock it off? I ain't trying to act like some tragic heroine here. And I don't care that my daddy isn't the same color as me. You're way more narrow-minded than I took you for, Agent York. Narrow-minded? You're just realizing this now? Of course I'm narrow-minded. I'm a selfish man who lives life according to his own rules, with no interest in common sense. Naturally, this makes me terrible at reading situations, and I often end up angering people by total accident. But is it really that big of a problem? I've still made a contribution to society by solving numerous difficult cases, and I'm still terribly charming. And I'm still terribly charming. <laughs> no he one agrees. I have absolutely nothing in common. What kind of circumstances does a kid even need to end up like you? Try asking Zach. It's not my place to answer that one. <sighs> All right, I think I'm gonna end it here, and in the next part, we'll figure out how to get these two um, things. Thanks for watching. See ya.